Is there a connection between your ode to joy and the one from 200 years ago by Beethoven? Uh, no. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't make I mean, up when, the phrase, though. I didn't make up the phrase, Ode yeah. to Joy. Obviously, the connection is that it's, um, we, we appropriated the, the, the title um, because uh, it just seemed like nothing else quite fit the record. There was an, uh, the initial, one of the other titles initially was The Trouble with Caring. Um, which sounded a little bit too on the nose and a little bit too intense. <laughs> and Ode to Joy s seemed to highlight the part of that you said you were having trouble finding, but, but right. we feel like is there. There is a hopefulness to, uh, I don't know, we had so much fun making the record in spite of the, the sadness that's apparent and the, 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 I don't know, that it reflects some disturbing atmosphere that we're all swimming around in. Yeah. You know. <laughs> the Trouble with Caring is a pretty good title. Maybe you should just go all the way and say that the record's called A Cry for Help. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir. Are you going to play Jesus, et cetera, tonight? Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, my actual... Yeah, we probably will because we didn't play it last Spoiler. Time. Yeah. <laughs> right. There it is. Oh, I don't know. Uh, my Maybe. actual question is, um, somebody who knows you told me once that you read more than anybody that that person knows. And I'm just kind of curious what sort of stuff uh, it's good rep to do have. you read? I, from uh, the time I was very young, I'm an insatiable reader. There, I have lots and lots of books open at all, all times. I don't tend to read one book all the way through very often. Um, I have to get really, really sucked into it to do that. But it's it, it runs, uh, uh, runs from... Uh, there's a new, well, it's not that, that new. There was a new history of Vietnam that's like I'm carrying around with me. Uh, there's some short stories by some new authors. I, I have a, since I put a book out, I yep. get care packages from my publisher, which is awesome because they just got a box of books on the bus when we were in New York. And um, so it's, it's just, I don't know. I also read a lot on my phone. I, I, like, when people talk about kids not reading very much these days, that's insane. Kids read all day long. They just read in short little chunks. Right. You know, but, it, but they, they get a lot of information like that. But Good. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, Jeff. Hi. Um, my question for you is early in the book, you said that you weren't confident in your voice and that you kind of felt like a prepubescent um, child <laughs> when your voice was squeaky. So I was really surprised when the memoir came out that you chose to do a uh, reading and that you read the entire book, which I just really appreciated you doing that. I'm wondering when and where you found your confidence in your voice um, and if you feel like you do you have a confidence now or do you still struggle with that? Well, reading the audio version of my book was in the top 10 worst things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because of that, because I, I, well, I also, I, I got up in my head. There, were, there was a whole maybe day and a half where I couldn't say the word Wilco. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a problem. It was a problem. It's mentioned quite a bit yeah. in the book. Um, but yeah, um, uh, but I did think it, was, it would be silly for someone else to read it. And I got, I got my wife to read the interview part, and Spencer reads his section. Because um, uh, it, you know, I mean, I, wanted, I, read out, I read out loud a lot to myself writing the book because I wanted it to be conversational. But um, yeah, it turns out I can write at a, like a 10th grade level and I can only read it out loud at a fourth grade level maybe <laughs> or something. Somehow you got over the line, I think. So, <laughs> Thank good. you. Last question. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. I've been thinking a lot about the word and and the word but, and mm. I've had a lot of therapists tell me over the last few years that if I could say things like, I'm hopeful and anxious instead of I'm hopeful but anxious that mm -hmm. my life would change. Mm -hmm. um, and today I was driving and I was listening to Pie Holden Sweet mm -hmm. and I was listening to the first line, um, there's a whisper I'd like to breathe into your ear, but I'm too scared to get that close to you right now. 
Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about that phrase and how it might feel different if it was and instead mm -hmm. of but. And I'm wondering if you, as a poet and a writer and a human who uses language, has thought about that difference, um, and if you think that line would change in meaning. That line would definitely change in meaning, and it would be, um, uh, I think it would be more uh, realistic and accurate if I had used the word and instead of but. But the way I felt at that time was definitely the way I sang it and the way I wrote it. But, but it, I did not know then what I know now, which is I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm much more able to tolerate and, and, and embrace the idea that we have m many emotions all of the time, not one emotion, you're not happy you're, you're happy and worried. Um, we, we all struggle with that so much, and it, I think your therapist is probably, I mean, I think you can really run into a lot of dangers with therapists, because almost anybody can hang their shingle out. <laughs> you know? But uh, if you find a good one, I think that's good advice. I think that, that everybody, I think the, one of the signs of, of emotional health, mental health to me, is how, how well I'm able to deal with ambiguity, you know, with not knowing. And um, I've tried to write about that more recently and trying to reflect that current state in the songs I write now, but definitely it would have changed. Thanks for th such a thoughtful question. That's a great question. Steve, do we have time for the one more? So um, th this, is, this is the music director of KUT, the oh, public yeah. radio station in Austin, who actually knows things. So oh, I'm I, a little nervous. I think I've seen him before. I'm nervous I mean, about yeah. this. So go ahead. What are you going to do? So uh, I was at Solitaire. And uh, my favorite thing that you said, my favorite thing of the whole weekend was in the middle of a set, you were, the audience was just eating up everything you were doing. And you said, there's a lot more of this than that. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you remember that or not, but it, you know, when your record came out and I saw it was titled Ode to Joy, I went, well, is there a connection there? I mm. mean, you know, it, can you elaborate on that? Well, I think that there has to be a lot more, I would say even what I was referring to would be this, um, uh, people coming together in one room and, and doing something together, thinking together, talking, uh, listening, um, this is this is constructive. I guess that's one one way of de defining this versus that. But I, maybe just maybe just barely more. <laughs> but it's it's got to be more. Otherwise, I think the world would really fall apart. Um, but it's also not. I don't think that's a thought that should absolve you from trying to create more of this and uh, trying to be more helpful to your neighbor and more loving uh, and more understanding. Um, because I, I worry sometimes that we can use that comfort, of the, the knowledge, the, the belief that we've ta ta taught ourselves that, that we're, there's a lot, there, there are a lot more good people than bad people. Now, that's probably true, but um, I just think it's worth identifying when you see it <laughs> And I think it's and it's worth reminding um, each other that that it's our responsibility to create more. It's good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, make sure that when we sell this show to PBS stations around the country, that we blurb it. This is constructive, Jeff Tweedy. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell people. It so. is. Well, Don't good. You, you know what? I, I I like this. This is good. It's nobody constructive. nobody hurt anybody during no, this. No, not that I'm aware of. That's exactly right. Look, um, we are. Um, we are fortunate on a busy weekend when he's performing and all kinds of other things could be happening to have some time with Jeff Tweedy. Please give him a big hand. Thank you all.